Hello, my name is Clarence Hillard, and in today's video, we're going to go over NetEdit's topology view. Here is my NetEdit instance. I'm going to navigate to my network topology. And here you can see a bunch of stuff is going on. So I have uh, three panes when it comes to my network topology view. So the first pane over here is what we call our network layers uh, pane. And this allows you to see and not see uh, certain things within your topology in the center here. So this really can drive uh, what information you want uh, in general. So if I don't want to see certain NAE scripts, so I see this is critical. I, I know this NAE script uh, falls under the application health monitor and I just uncheck that and now it goes to normal so I no longer see that I can do that for my VLAN information here so I see there's some issues over here um, so let me turn that back on I think it went a little too quick but you can actually see there's a little red triangle here and I can toggle this to show me that information or not show me that information I can also toggle the bridging and turn that off and on uh, as well so if I actually had this box checked and I I toggle that off, I would also not see that information. If I toggle it on, that information will appear. Uh, I can see what devices are routing on my network if I want to. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see OSPF, a little icon above all of the switches. Um, I'm going to zoom back out, actually. Let's uh, hit the magnifying glass, and that's going to snap everything into the right place. And I can untoggle that as well if I don't want to see that information as well. Now, you might be wondering why an NAE agent is showing under application. This actually works hand in hand with the tagging in 10.4 of a NAE script. So whenever you have an NAE script, you can actually put a little tag at the top. And if that tag falls under application, segmentation, services, routing, bridging, etc., uh, it'll actually appear in the proper place here. And you can check and uncheck that. Uh, particular NAE agent to see information about that agent if it's critical, major, minor, or if it's just a healthy and okay. So I can toggle that on and off if I want to be. Oh, if I want to do that, I want it on. I want to know what's going on in the network. I can also see uh, VLAN information. So these layers can let me type in VLAN information. It has 197, but we're going to do 195 to see where VLAN 195 exists. And we're also going to do VLAN 198 and see where VLAN 198 exists. And here you can actually see that the gray links are the actual physical links between devices. And these colored links for my VLANs are the logical VLANs uh, for devices. And one important thing to note is because we support both CX and non uh, AOS CX devices is we can actually see that you know the VLAN is definitely being trunked across on half of the link but we can't always guarantee because we're uh, on third-party devices because we're not pulling that information via SNMP uh, currently and then here you can actually see that I have these tiny red triangles and these little red triangles are actually part of the device health uh, or network health on the far right hand side and you see I have, I have a few red errors here so I have one for the application so my application in a e monitor is red and then I have one as well for bridging and you can see that it says VLANs 197 and 198 are missing uh, well it doesn't say it's missing so let's actually drill down a little bit further and click this device and here you can see on this device it says VLANs 197 and 198 is on 10.6.9 at 22 lag minute 20 but is not on given uh, but is not on the lag member of 10.6.9 at 23 so what that means is I have the VLANs configured on these two guys. So they're running MC lag or, or VSX with an MC lag down to this device. Uh, but he doesn't have those VLANs trunking up to those devices. And that it's able to actually tell you that information and, and help you look at that information. Uh, and I know that uh, VLAN 198 is one of those VLANs because I can see that it's grayed out a little bit here. So I can see there's that gray uh, line and then it's uh, that purplish, uh, pinkish purple color as well. And then the blue is being trunked down all the way because it's going all the way to that switch. So we can fix that issue uh, or we can ignore it and just uncheck the box and act like nothing happened. <laughs> so um, for right now, we're going to ignore that and we're going to fix it in a second here. 
I want to touch on this other section down here. Now, this other section is for devices running NAE scripts that are not running 10.4 necessarily or don't have the tags within their NAE script to populate into a bridging, routing services, etc. Uh, one of those sections. They'll just populate down here and other, and you can turn them on and off and see what devices are critical, etc. Uh, if you want to. So you, that's what the other section is really meant for. It's not uh, other you know, random fields. It's really meant for those other NAE scripts that don't have the tag uh, on them. So if you don't see your NAE script pop up somewhere in here, that means you didn't have the tag and it should be down here in other. Now, so for the whole uh, topology view here, there's a bunch of things you can do. So before in previous versions of NetEdit, you had the device list and you would actually go to the device list and that's where you'd start your configuration and, and basically start your entire workflow for NetEdit. Well, now you can do that from the topology view. And within the topology, you can do a bunch of things. So I can highlight devices, I can just shift and drag, highlight some devices and I can group them. I can discover devices, I can delete links, I can delete devices, uh, I can look at the device details, I can change their address, so, and this is their management address that NetEdit uses. Uh, I can edit the attributes, so I can apply attributes to devices quickly. So let's, uh, let's actually get that controller out of there. Click Edit Attributes, and I'm going to quickly add them into the core attribute. Click Save. And now they are searchable. So if I do core at the top, true, it'll actually search on those two devices and select those devices too. And I can then right click and do whatever I'm going to do. So if I want to deploy a solution or change the firmware or view plans associated with those two devices, I can do that all from the topology view now. And it's very, very quick to just click and click and highlight. Um, maybe I want to group these devices into a, a core section, I could do that as well. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to. Now, returning back to our, our problem switch down here uh, that had that VLAN issue, let's check that box again. And let's actually get rid of the VLANs. So we just have the equal sign. So we just have the physical links. I'm going to right click this device. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to quickly deploy a solution. Now you can click deploy solution on a bunch of devices, or in this case, it's just going to be one device. I'm just going to add remove configuration, and I'm going to copy and paste some configure in there. Like that. And I'm going to click preview. And here I'm using one of the solution configurations to actually quickly uh, fix and remediate my issue that I had. So I'm just going to click OK and click Create. And what this is going to do now is it's going to go out to the device, push the configuration, and do all the validation uh, that we're used to with NetEdit. But now I've just done that in a few clicks, and I've just popped it into uh, some CLI, and I'm, and I'm done. So I'm going to deploy that. And you still get all your change validation stuff and all that fun stuff that you had before with your plans uh, when you go to edit a large plan or, or do it the other way, uh, but now it's within the solution configuration and it just is right on top of the topology, which is really nice because then you can do this and then apply something else quickly next uh, if need be. And all my change validation is still here, so I can you know quickly click on that and let's see, where's my device? Oh, it's this device here. And I can see the running before and after configuration as well. Click OK, close out. And I don't even have to switch screens. And I can quickly do this for other devices as well. Uh, in an earlier video, we actually had a conformance rule saying what devices aren't running uh, don't have that management ACL that we had configured. So I can do that as well. I can search for those devices. Uh, but the topology view is really uh, the new starting point for a lot of your workflows and troubleshooting. And it's not the only thing you can do is just apply configuration. You can also visualize uh, things like VXLAN tunnels. Uh, so over here, I have a switch to switch, and that's really for VXLAN. So if I check that box, I can see my VXLAN tunnels go from building one over to building three. And if I want to change that, I can change that quickly by backing that out. And I can look over here on the right hand side and see the other VNIs I have on my network. So I can do 15. 
and I can see the VXLAN tunnels going from my leaf switches and my data center across each of those devices. And I can also see what devices are tunneling. So if I'm using our dynamic segmentation, I can check this box and see what devices are tunneling to what controller. So if I had more than one controller here, it would actually show uh, tunneling to more than one controller as well. But in this case, I just have one. So I'm going to uncheck those right now. And once again, uh, the topology view is a great starting point for a lot of workflows. So what I typically do is I'll do a upgrade. So I'll do a model and let's do my 6300s, right? So I'm going to select my 6300s and then I'm just going to right click and then I would click change firmware and it's going to drop me right into the firmware plan uh, without me having to come in here first and then creating that plan. So it's just a different way to do a lot of your workflow. So I'm going to cancel out of that right now. Uh, a lot of diff uh, different way to do a lot of your uh, workflows that you would do typically with NetEdit, uh, just starting from the topology view and let you really visualize the network and then also quickly make changes and fix issues if you have them. Another really good thing about this is if you go over to your network health, you can actually see NAE agents, so network analytic agents. And I see one is critical, so I can actually click that device that is critical right now, or I could search for that device and, and click it. And I can drill down and I can actually go right into the web UI of that device and look at, oops, let me authenticate, and look at the NAE agent. There we go. analytics and now I'm here uh, looking at that particular agent and I have some traffic running uh, this particular agent goes critical if the MOS score is below one and I currently don't have any voice traffic on my network uh, so if I've already been logged into that device I can actually click on that same link again and it'll bring me right to the agent without me needing to log in so that's also a really nice feature as well and some good integrations with NAE now on the right hand side here, you can actually see the device's information. So you can see it's a master, uh, so it's stacked, if it was stacked. I don't I think this switch is actually stacked. I think I just have some VSX config in there, or VSF config in there. So it's reporting it's stacked, but it's just a, mem a one member stack, <laughs> or it was stacked in the past. You can also see some interfaces, so what interfaces are connected and, and up and running. Uh, and then you can see the uplinks down here as well. And you can see the model device, what is running, and serials, all that information pretty quick uh, in just one click. And you can see all the device health, so if I had segmentation going, so right now I don't have any inconsistencies with segmentation, uh, but I can also bring this up and uh, I can see bridging information as well uh, if I had any inconsistencies and all that fun stuff. So all this information available to you very, very quickly uh, versus, you know, clicking into the device like you had to do before and actually going into device details and uh, looking at that information, serial address and all that fun stuff. So it all visualized really, really easily within the topology uh, view as well. So this has been the network topology view within NetEdit. Uh, thank you for listening.